like this setup here, man. I, I do. I, I usually don't put a lot of setups uh, and really share a lot of setups on, you know, on on the video because again, this goes out to everybody. But I like this setup. I really do. I, I we got to watch this JK solo for tomorrow. Um, the only thing we Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com nightly update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. So let's get into the market. So. Um, I think you could do a much better job uh, than me talking about politically what needs to happen for a decisive winner. We all do know that it is a very, very uh, close race and these key battleground states that everybody knows needs to be won, well, they need to be won. So I don't think there's going to be a clear-cut winner for a while. There are a few states that are saying Thursday, Friday, which basically means Monday, um, so it's very, very unclear still who is in control. But we did see yesterday, and we talked about this on the video yesterday, we did see firsthand the, the kind of the, the aftershock, right? So in the beginning of the night, when people thought Biden was winning, you started seeing the futures trickle down, right? The cash futures were going down. And as soon as you thought that was all set in stone, if you guys remember, there was a really parabolic candle last night, um, really aggressive. And there was different ways to kind of look at it, right? People will say, well, Trump is going to win. Everything was all good. Apparently, a landslide for uh, Biden was not in the cards. So there was a lot of room for interpretation. But the most important part was we started seeing the volatility that I really thought was going to start in the beginning of the week. But we did start seeing it last night. So when I woke up this morning, you know, again, I wasn't going to sit there and, and just watch the futures all night. There's, there's, there's no point of it. I don't trade futures. I don't have a futures account. Um, so I woke up this morning and I saw the market up. That was up like 500 points. And automatically, I, I thought, you know, I said to myself, well, if, they were, if the futures were going up yesterday with a Trump um, with a Trump realization that he might win, well, the futures are up because of Trump. Well, apparently the futures were up because of Biden, which was very, very weird because if you look at the groups that were supposed to be very, very strong because of Biden, they got sold, right? So the solar names, uh, for example, they got sold. Again, how can the market be up embracing a Biden victory if they're selling, for example, the solar stocks, uh, the wheat stocks? And by the way, great job, New Jersey. Uh, we are crazy. Uh, hamstrung with you know all these deficits and everything so they legalized weed good job for uh, the state of New Jersey the Garden State uh, the problem is I don't smoke but again I know for all you guys do it's kind of a cool thing now you can get uh, your weed for a medical reason as long as you're 21 years old so again it was kind of odd of having the market rally today as the names that were supposed to benefit from a Biden rally we're selling off. So a lot of really confusing things and headlines. But again, I don't think this is going to go away uh, tomorrow, Friday. We'll probably get some sort of a little more clarity probably over the weekend. I think that's the best way of saying it. But I think, again, I don't think I could do a, a, a justice to uh, all you political uh, fanboys and fangirls than Google. Google. They'll tell you exactly what's going on. From the trading aspect, the market did exactly what we thought was going to do, if you guys remember last night, uh, we talked about in the video, the problem with yesterday's close, right? As much as I loved a lot of these setups, they were going to blow up because, again, they were either going to, if you watch last night's video, they were either going, the market was either going to gap up 500 points, okay, and every single setup that I loved was going to be off and running, or the market was going to gap down 500 points, 1,000 points, because the market did not like uh, what they saw yesterday, right? They saw last night. And exactly that's what happened. So we had this really big gap up. And if you look at, you know, kind of what we talked about last night, you know, we were kind of into the realization this morning that 
if you came in flat like I did, right? I just trade ranges. I, again, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen next month. I trade ranges, both long and short. My definitive opinion lies in the channel, okay? Uh, after a stock confirms macro, then we go into a daily channel, but everything I do goes into the channel. So this kind of environment is, is probably perfect for me because I'm in control. I don't have any inventory. I don't have any cloud of um, concern overnight. Just only thing messing things would be uh, a really big uh, macro event. And that's obviously what we had. So we had a choice today, okay? Uh, and I think every, I speak for every single trader who came in flat today, okay? We had a choice. We're either going to chase the price actions. For example, if I liked, you know, if I liked, um, you know, I'm just using the stock. If I liked Apple at 110, right? Is it, do I start chasing Apple at 117, right? It's silly. It's stupid. There's no advantage there for me. So we had a choice to either chase the scoreboard, okay, uh, anticipate a gap and go, sit it out, which again, you could always sit it out. I, I don't believe if you're a professional trader, you've been doing this for a very long time, you can always finagle your way you know, into the goal line. So I think we had some pretty good value today, but this wasn't, you know, a day that we woke up this morning and said, look, we got 30 stocks to choose from. Everything's breaking out. Everything's about to confirm macro. We love the market. It doesn't make a difference what the headlines is. Just buy anything. And if you did that right from the word go, you got destroyed because that first poll was incredibly aggressive. Um, what I like what we did today, it wasn't one of those traditional days that everything went it was more of a, of, a, of, a, of a day that we sat there, we picked our spots, we watched the names that were about to confirm either macro-wise, which was a daily channel, or had some sort of catalyst, uh, catalyst or something that um, I set maybe an alert for a week ago, two weeks ago, that was about to trigger on this uh, gap up that still needed a second entry. So I was very, very proud of the way we kind of moved today. I, I think that's the, the biggest point. Um, we didn't get blinded by the light. We didn't need to chase uh, the performance of other names that we liked significantly lower. We, we stood our ground. We waited for everything to play out. Uh, we caught some good bounce spots uh, as well. Again, for all you guys on the Twitter feed, I, I don't put the bounce spots in there because this is just for natural pivots. We do that uh, in the live webinar. But the more important is we were in control. There was no FOMO and we traded, treated today and traded today like it was any other day in control. No expectations equals no disappointments. That means emotions are going to be removed. So let's talk about today's trading session. Again, pretty organic and that's the way we want it. Organic, boring, lethargic, and that equals in control. So uh, Baidu got up upgraded this morning. Um, that was literally the only natural, there was two natural breaks, Teradyne and Baidu. Again, remember, when was the last time you saw me talk about Teradyne? That's my point. Uh, again, beggars can't be choosers. Uh, so Baidu 139, huge daily level. Uh, it also got rejected there pre-market. It needs to reclaim and build. Got upgraded this morning, I believe by Barclays, uh, with a $170 price target. So here was Baidu. And this was just basically... This is just basically a daily chart break. This wasn't like one of those uh, sneaky pivots we always talk about or anything outrageous. This was just literally a daily confirmation. Uh, the high on uh, October the 14th was uh, 138.98, so basically 99. If you looked at it pre-market, right, the pre-market high was also 139. So once it took out that 139, just really, really exploded. Uh, you know, really exploded, went all the way up to 144. Really big move there. Uh, second one was Teradyne, uh, upgraded 93, 50, 94 needs to build basically 52 week highs. So here is Teradyne, uh, again, basic stuff. Sometimes you don't need creative channels, uh, to get going again. Here's the, you know, here's the whole channel here, 93.50. Everybody see you guys, 93.50, this whole channel here, uh, closed pretty much at the high today at 96 and change. So good, you know, good early moves. And again, th and this is the whole point. I, I kept on reiterating the point. Uh, we have to be super patient today because 99% of the value on the long side is gone because of this amazing, amazing, relentless, aggressive uh, a gap up. So you want to be very, very patient and wait for those channels to confirm the stocks that haven't gone yet, or else the last thing you want to do is chase the market up a thousand points in the last two days yesterday, gap up another 500 points today. The last thing you want is a rug pull and you get absolutely destroyed. So sit tight, sit really, really tight. Uh, Pinterest, I still like this thing for tomorrow, never got to 62. Uh, there was two pivots on Tesla uh, to the long side. 
One was right here at the open, uh, 431, 432 needs to build. Wasn't a big move. Again, Tesla, uh, Tesla rested today. So here is the pivot at 431, 432. It was right over here, right? Right over here, 431, 432. Uh, put in like a $3 candle. That wasn't a big one, not at all. We also caught one reclaiming, which I, I forgot to put on the Twitter feed, but there was one that we did in the room. We, we reclaimed the 25 area, ran almost to 28. That was a pretty good trade uh, also on Tesla. But again, people ask me after the close, well, what do you think about Tesla? Why do you think it was, it was weak today? I don't think it was weak today. I, I think the stock made a move from 379 uh, to 435 in three days. Okay, like, like everything else, it needs to rest. So I don't think it's weak. So I, I kind of want to watch it for tomorrow. I, I, I want to give it the benefit of the doubt to the upside because again, it is basing, it, did, it, it is basing above the supply here. So I do want to give it like one more day to kind of give me uh, another clue of what it wants to do next. But again, I don't want to pass judgment on it uh, just yet. So again, take on the way up. Uh, take on the wake. I, I like this setup here, man. I, I do. I, I usually don't put a lot of setups uh, and really share a lot of setups uh, you know, on on the video. Because again, this goes out to everybody. But I like this setup. I really do. I, I We got to watch this JK solo for tomorrow. Um, the only thing is, it's a little hard to borrow. Okay, um, I knew I, I, I checked this morning. I didn't have a locate. Maybe there'll be one for tomorrow, but I like this setup. And if this thing starts confirming this whole channel here, th look how much room that there is to go. So we got to watch it. Not only JK Solar, we got to watch uh, a lot of this, you know, a lot of the solars as well. But uh, JK Solar definitely looks prime if it confirms. Again, you don't want to jump the gun and say, well, Dan just said it's going to go down. No, no, I, I'm saying we have to watch it confirm to the downside. Again, you don't want to anticipate a move. That's how you get. Uh, really, really hit. Again, watch it. Uh, watch it. Uh, until it confirms, it's just a setup. Uh, 213, uh, Roku needs to build for cash flow spike. I thought it could get up to 215. And the reason why, again, it's already gapped up. Again, you don't want to chase something up $25, whatever the case may be. Uh, they do report tomorrow. They might be one more trade in it tomorrow, but here's the pivot here, 213 on Roku, right? So here's the 213 pivot on Roku. It was right here, right? Ooh, excuse me, right here. This whole supply right here, 213. Again, traded up to like 215 and change. Again, not the biggest move in the world because again, you're, you're already we're buying it up 10. So you, again, you have to kind of curb your enthusiasm. How much more do you want these things to go? Again, you're trading from channel, right? Here's the top of the channel and you're trading to the next channel right here. So again, you know where your supply zone are. S supply zones are, there are no, uh, there are no uh, guessing games here. Again, not every single trade needs to be uh, a 20 point move. We like them, we want them, but it doesn't have to be that way. It's just kind of, uh, moving around what the market gives you. So again, and, and, and that was the whole point today. Uh, after the morning, we just said, look, we're just picking spots today. Uh, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm not trying to, uh, you know, I'm not trying to forecast what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know. Again, guys, we don't know. Everybody will run out and tell you how smart they are and uh, what they think is going to happen next. I'm an idiot. I have no idea. Everybody, all my friends, we're all idiots. Anybody who's been trading uh, since the end of 99, 2000, we're all idiots, okay? We're just byproducts of time, okay? And when you're byproducts of time and you're doing this for two decades, you kind of know what not to do. And this is kind of how I want to segue into tomorrow's session. We've now had a really, really big move, right? Um, I think that was pretty much it. Just keep scaling, keep scalping. Yeah, that was pretty much it. So, you know, it was a very efficient day today. I, I, that, that's what I liked about today. It was very efficient. There wasn't really a lot of hiccups. It was just, you know, Channels, confirmation, second entries, take your cash flow, rinse, repeat. Now, here's the problem for tomorrow, okay? Um, the market's up a lot, right? Now, again, is, is the point the market can't go higher tomorrow? Of course it can, okay? Everybody knows the market going high. There's no such thing, as I've been saying for years, as overbought, oversold. But there is something called too much, too fast, okay? And for all you guys, especially who trade the smaller cap names or even momentum names, you guys know, uh, there's something on social media, I think it's called like the three day rule, right? The last thing you wanna do is buy a hot stock gapping up three days in a row because more times than not, you're gonna get trapped on that gap up and they're gonna reverse course and kill you, okay? So we're kind of, we're kind of there, the same thing on in the market right now. We're, you know, we have a big three day move. And, and again, granted, the market looks great. Um, the setups for tomorrow look great. I just have a hard time really looking at an, you know, looking at certain names that had this really magnificent move in the last three days. So going into 
tonight or actually tomorrow morning, I, I, you know, I've made a list of some longs, couple of shorts, right? I kind of want to be prepared on both sides in my personal opinion. Again, I'm a schmuck. I know nothing. Okay. But in my humble opinion, if you are in inventory, basically long overnight and you do get a gap up, I think in my opinion, it's a better sell than buy just because again, you know, stocks don't go straight up. Stocks do get tired. And if you look at the Dow towards the end of the day, and again, it's, it's not an indication of what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm just, again, trying to connect the dots uh, and putting pieces to the puzzle. But if you look at the market uh, in the last, you know, the last two hours, the Dow went from up 650 to being down to being up 350, right? Again, is that going to translate into tomorrow's session? Maybe, maybe not. But the point is, again, let's at least be ready. Okay. You know, don't run on fumes. Don't guess. Don't anticipate. Okay. We have the evidence in front of us. Uh, so going into tomorrow, you know, I'm very, I'm very delta neutral at the open. I want to see how everything plays out, but I, I was very, very conscious tonight to make a list of longs that haven't gone parabolic or haven't gone on the super massive run that either closed above the five or 10 day moving average that needs good confirmation uh, into tomorrow's another push. Again, if you're buying a stock that just literally went from uh, 150 to 185 in three days, well, what else do you want? It just literally went 35 points in three days. How much more do you want before you know somebody pulls the rug and you're unprepared? Again, it's, it's better to be a day early than a day late. And that's kind of my mindset going into tomorrow's session. So guys, for all you guys who are political uh, fanboys and fangirls, uh, again, may the best man win. We'll probably get some sort of closure by Monday, the year 2036. God knows what's going to happen. Guys, God bless. I wish you all the best. Love you all. And I'll see you on the field tomorrow.